Greetings, ladies and mental gents, and welcome to this daily science fiction extravaganza, commonly known as Tales, Tales from Out from space. Out, space, out, space. Out, space. Taken from the subreddit HFY. All the relevant links will be down below. And, as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider supporting the channel. On to the science fiction. Just a little addendum to the intro, letting you know that this Saturday at 9pm GMT, I will be doing a stream where I will be opening up some Magic the Gathering booster packs. This will be in preparation for the big Warhammer TCG box opening that will be happening sometime at the end of the month. I hope to see you all there. Story number one. How I Met Your Mother, written by underscore sky underscore underscore. Terran males are different. They are not like you or me. They are truly brave. The craziest in the galaxy, said Fonz, a resound veteran of many conflict mercenary everyone wanted to hire. His exoskeleton littered with scars and his missing claw reminding him of the battle fought long ago. You must be kidding, replied the young warrior from his species, standing next to him, his exoskeleton smooth as that of a baby, his claws in pristine condition. Of course he is kidding, another deep voice interrupted, coming from being the which looked like a nightmare given form, spites covering most of his body. I am serious, there is no race whose bravery is equal to that of the Terrans answered the Fonz, to the surprise of everyone in the bar. Now many dangerously-looking individuals started turning around to better hear what the hell he was talking about. Huh? But they're weak, easy to kill, said the young warrior, his voice still hesitant as the Terrans were a new addition to the galactic community. Sounds of acknowledgement of those whose words rose up from the members of the bar. Anybody who bothered to look at the danger assessment reports on the Terrans had known for a fact that those humans were nothing special physically or psychologically. That was my first impression, too, explained the Fonz. I have never been so wrong in my life. With that claim, the entire bar turned quiet. The Fonz was a well-known and respected amongst them. Many of the aliens here had done a job or two with him in their time, Thus, they were more than a little intrigued by what he had to say. What changed your mind? asked an insectoid alien from the corner of the bar. Others nodded with their heads. A week ago? Yes, it was just a week ago. I was hired by this rich human to serve as his bodyguard. It was only natural some weak creatures like a human would need protection around here. And paying somebody like the Fonz to do that job was the very least the testament to the Terrans were not idiots. But if they were so brave, why would they need a bodyguard? Said the young warrior standing next to him. The same question was on everyone else's face. As the story about the human paying for protection seemed to contradict the previous statement about their incredible courage. I know how it sounds, but let me finish. He took a sip of his Viziozark a corrosive acid, and his favorite drink before continuing. So there I was, standing next to him, really unremarkable creature. He said he came here because he heard this planet was the most badass mercenary cave. Again, most of the aliens in the bar nodded, with their heads or something similar. Many rich nobles, rulers, etc. often came here to raise an army or two. One could do a lot here if they had money enough. Standard thing. Everything looked like another member of a weak race came here to buy protection for his planet, a colony, or something. I was already preparing to ask him for who he needed protection, how much he was planning on spending to solve this problem, etc. Everything was silent in the bar as the Fonz was talking. But to my surprise, he wanted to know where the bar with the best girls. His claw shook as he spoke. I answered casually, thinking that he just wanted to be careful not to walk into one by accident. We all know what happens to the weak who enter there. Everyone again nodded with their heads, but now there was a newfound worry over their faces. Then he, um, he wanted me to take him there. A loud commotion swept through the bar. 
You're freaking screwing with me, Fonz, right? A few aliens even started laughing at how he got them thinking it was a serious for a while. I'm as serious as it gets. I swear it on my warrior's honor. His deep voice stunned the bar. By all that is holy, you did not seriously take him there. Some strange large alien with razor sharp teeth seemed to be on the brink of his nerves. His eyes fully black. I refused at first, and he tried to offer me more money. Naturally, I said that it was useless. But he was resolute on how everything had a price. The tone of the Fonz's voice suddenly more silent. He was right. I said the ridiculous sum. He doubled it. Seven trillion credits transferred to my account instantly. What? You can hire an entire Kazil swarm for that amount. It's more than all of us combined will earn in a lifetime, noted one of the aliens. By the honor, where did he get that amount of currency? Another lizard-type alien commented. That's why you have been buying rounds for everyone for the last three days. Finally, said the younger warrior standing next to him. You too would be drinking if you had seen the same thing as me, young one. Funz answered sharply, violently even, his face murderously serious. Yet he was obviously not intending to hurt the younger member of his species. But that is not the worst thing that happened. While we were walking there, he mentioned that he was planning to find a nice piece of ass and had some fun. I demanded he clarified what he meant by that. Few aliens around him looked at each other. The atmosphere and the bar so dense that it could stop a bullet. The Terran just calmly said he wanted to, that he wished to, um, he, um, uh, he was looking forward to having, uh, sex with a few of them. What? The entire bar exploded in shock. Dozens of mercenaries took a seat, many of them shaking their feeling nauseated. Bloody honor, Fonz, you actually let him there. After hearing that, the bartender finally spoke. He was the only one able to speak being an individual who had heard a lot of crazy stories in his lifetime, though this one was topped them all by far. I was too in shock. I could not believe it. A few minutes passed as everybody was recovering a bit, and the Fonz was trying to recollect his thoughts on how did they arrive at the first place. What happened then? The bartender's voice betraying both the dread and curiosity. He invited me in, offering to pay the bill for whatever I too had in mind. You did not take him up on that, right? Of course not. A burst of anger came across the fonts. How would I be here if I did? Right, right, sorry. I must have been like hell to see that. The bartender tried to ease the tension. Another few drinks later, by paid by fonts, everyone stood in a circle around him, as if they were children. I walked him in, my legs shaking. I'm not ashamed to admit it, not at all. The others agreed with him, but that human, he just walked forward towards the most human-looking girl in the salon and, uh, Fonz took a deep breath and, uh, asked her if she was up for having some fun. Uh, 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 and, and then, the young warrior asked, she showed him her fangs. And he liked it. The bastard smiled at her. Aimed she was vampire-like. They ordered a drink. And a few minutes later, they were walking towards the room. But that is not the worst thing. He shook his head. The scariest part was what he said when he was passing next to me. The bartender shoved another drink into his hand. What did he say? He said, uh, Wait for me here. I'll just have some fun. You're freaking crapping me, the bartender answered, obviously in disbelief. I do not. It's true. So what did you do next? Well, I, um, I actually waited for a few hours. What for? Nobody comes back from their sex. Those crazy witches turn you into a slave with their pheromones or eat your head and lay eggs inside your body. All the girls are like that. But, but he, he did come back. Silence and doubtful looks fell on Fonz. He paused a bit, gave them time to process what he had just said. Only the sounds of different drinks being consumed echoed all over the bar as the Fonz continued his story. And then he asked for another girl the same thing. 
and another one too, and he just kept going, showing his dull teeth every time one of them accepted his courtship. He survived multiple matings. Oh, he was scarred. You should see his back. They were bloody, as if he was wrestling with a bear, but he was alive, walking without a problem. Bloody honor! How was that possible? I heard about guys who got lucky, but this is on another level. I do not know, but that human is made of some stern stuff. I try to find out more information, but they're all really new to the galaxy. Not much is known about their, uh, culture. Yet still. But yet, the bartender urging him to continue. The Terran said something about, uh, romance, an ancient art of subduing a female and its rage. The human males perfected it over the course of countless millennia, but it was too abstract for me to comprehend. How abstract, exactly? It has something to do with looking at the stars, and the full moon was important, too. Nice cold wind during a summer night also helps. And you're sure that's all true? Maybe he is special, some freak of nature, some savant who actually can understand females. He, um, uh, he said that some guys on his planet often spend entire life mating with a single female, over and over, and they still end up dying from natural causes. No way, the young warrior exclaimed. They are actually not afraid of their females. It's not like that. He told me there are very few things as scary as a pissed-off mating partner. But they have a way of dealing with them. Some mystical plant called flower and special food called, uh, chocolate or, or something. Bloody honor, they have a way to appease females. The insectoid alien spoke. Indeed, that is how he supposedly made his fortune. Selling flowers and chocolates and stuff. He started the company just a few months ago, but it's growing fast. Of course, something that can stop an angry female eating you or screaming at you. It must be worth a fortune. Absolutely. My species gets knocked unconscious by pheromones during sex. Then we lose a limb or two. A similar thing is true for the others, but this chocolate thing makes females behave differently. They leave you alive in hopes of you bringing them some more. Verified the Fonz, relieved that they were believing him. Slow sound of doors opening went unnoticed by everyone in the bar. They were too focused on what the mercenary was saying. Oh, there you are, Fonz. I see you're having a drink or two. All heads turned around in an instant. In front of them was standing a plain-looking human. But to their horror, he was flanked by two females who had hungry smiles on their face. The girl on his left holding the human by his hand, while the girl on the right just stood there alone, looking nervously at the floor, her claws barely visible. Urgently, the more experienced mercenaries instinctively grabbed their gas masks and other defensive weapons, which gave you a chance if confronted by a seductive female. Gas masks, in particular, protecting them from strong pheromones. Oh, 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 easy, guys, the human spoke. I'm just here to see my friend Fonz. <laughs> the atmosphere was tense as it gets. Nobody took a breath. As the Fonz rose from his bar chair and walked towards the human, his warrior hands ready for anything, his reflexes silently waiting. Our contract is done, Terran. I am no more interested in working with you. Sorry for nothing personal, but your lifestyle is too suicidal for my taste. Look, Fonz, spoke the human. I know last week was not easy, but no other male on this planet has the guts like you. You twisted evolution has made mating into a suicide. We humans could not believe it once we ventured into space. Hell, if we did not have a few such examples on my own planet where the females eat the males, I would... Uh, enough, Darren! My contract with you is done. My honor is preserved. You have my admiration, but not my employment. The Terran just stared at him. I'm not here to be a boss, but rather a friend. A friend! I do not, uh, as I said, you have guts far more than I've ever seen. The level to which other males were horrified to even try talking to some female is just shocking. If they were not hunting or preying upon you guys, the entire sapien species would go extinct. He looked across the bar while speaking. That is the only reason we tolerate them. We do not want to go extinct, somebody replied from the crowd. 
I know, I know, spoke the human while taking a step forward. Hal hath no fury like an angry woman. Even on my planet, they are often impossible to comprehend. No science or reason can fully allow you to deal with them. But we males have to do it. It is our duty towards our species to do so. And I can help you. I absolutely can. He winked at them. How do you... How, how can you help? Chocolate and flowers can only delay the inevitable, but... Uh, asked the fonts, a glimmer of hope on his face. I can be your wingman. The best wingman that you'll ever have. A wingman? Huh? I'll explain it later. But for now... The human turned towards the girl on his right. She looked up, excited smile on her face. This is Hazaya, and she thinks you are awesome. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this dose of science fiction fun. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you did, please don't forget to support the author from the link down below. But if you want to support this channel, there are links as well down below for you to help with. But the easiest way would be to share this video. And if you are so inclined, subscribe as well. I will see you all in the next episode. And I hope that you all have a fantastic time until then. Cheers.